Our quest stands upon the edge of a knife. Or a shovel. But how did we get here, you ask? Let me tell you a story. The story of Duffelbag and Gerald Williams. And here we go. The snowstorm rages on. My new abode remains trusted and in one place. I have a lot to do today, but I first need to explore some wreckage. Our weight is dropping precariously low into danger territory. Just a little through the trees and beyond this road is a car. Perhaps a find for us. I am safe here. No matter how long it takes me, I have the strength. And what lies inside? Right now the car has nothing, but there is still the trunk. And the trunk has only junk. While the condition of the car is lamentable, we can gain some experience and mechanics from it, and we can pass the time in the back seat to rest. But the daylight is becoming painfully short, and I'm getting more company. Every day it seems there are more of those things to deal with. We can scrap areas and keep moving on. There's more profit ahead of us. The first house. Uh... Is there anything worthwhile in here? It's a frantic chase, each time, and nothing in here. Anything in here, down jackets, alarm clocks, not what I need. There's one inside, too. We don't have much time. Maybe one more foraging and trapping, and we have to beat it. Out the window we go, and I managed to get only foraging for beginners, and we've riled up the horde. We can steal away into the woods and back home. It behooves us now to get ahead on spring work and prepare the fields. Now living the life of a strangely, unexpectedly nomadic farmer. Hope in human settlements may diminish. Most Mother Earth provides. The well offers us an unlimited supply of water, and although our setting is remote, we do have plenty from the Earth. And we secure our livelihood in the perfect silence of the night. After many days, I still don't know if this is the beginning of a new life or the end of an old one. Only time will tell now. Time is all I have, and not much of it. But in a sense, I have a lot of time. What else am I gonna do? And so again in the morning, we steal in the woods. Steal away. The house is now guarded and overrun where it wasn't before. Some of the entrances offer an opportunity though. And that's it. That's what we needed. Knowledge, knowledge is, after all, power. And now armed with the knowledge of trapping and commercial models of cars, it may not be a direct road to food, but it'll give us the means to obtain food. And so now dangerously low on weight, I spend the day in my cabin. An old saying goes, live as if you were to die today, learn as if you would live forever. I can read 500 words per minute, though I am an extremely slow reader. And in this fashion, the reading continues throughout the day until I read as fast as goodwill hunting. And then I move, and then I move to light speed. But knowledge, and although knowledge is an end unto itself, it is also a means to an end. This will speed up our trapping progress, but we need the we need the traps themselves to catch the animals in the first place. A day passes and I am finally smart. We'll collect our literature on the shelf and eat a worm as a nightcap. Before long, it's time to retire to my humble stool. At the dawn, I'm awake again. And I have not been counting the days, but I make the conjecture that my cabbages at home might be fully grown now. It's time to return to McCoy because these are a valuable source of fat. So I'll lose one day, if not more, running back. And the weather is getting so cold I'm bound to catch a cold on my way back. With that in mind, I have my doubts. I'd much rather stay here and wait for a warmer day for safe passage. I will die if I stay here, but I won't die as quickly as I might anticipate. It's better to wait it out and chance it. And so now we sneak our way back to town. Even now, the threat of catching cold is still high, but I've got only five kilograms worth of time, whatever that might look or sound like. We sneak it back through the woods, quietly, Quietly. Almost nothing in this house. And now they're banging. Vitamins. Anything in here? Nothing good. Oh, nothing good enough to warrant staying. It's time to leave. Quietly. Quietly. This house is history, but each new one is a chance, albeit a brief one. There's one last house, but it's too overrun. I need to get out of here. Our protagonist is an extremely unfortunate man, but he now has reading. As you know, knowledge is the only true joy, and we use it to get rid of our depression. By the afternoon, the temperature's improved enough for safe travel. Lightly equipped, we now make our way back to McCoy to harvest the last cabbages. It's a narrow window of opportunity and one we can't miss. Undershooting it will mean more weight loss, and overshooting it will mean disaster. And so using the car crash site as our only landmark, we turn east back to Muldraw. Now a long walk awaits us in the woods. The temperature is also dropping and I am starving. Fortunately, I, I brought the last of my food. I am now hypothermic. A quick stop for some worms. Two will be enough and then it's back 
back to the walk. Though we undershot the growth on these cabbages. In the meantime, we utilize unconventional warfare. There's little I can do now besides clear the way. All that I have left will be one last ditch effort into Muldraw. And however many swings it takes, there may still yet be one opportunity. Or two, or three, or three, or three, or four, or five. And I had overlooked this before, but we still have one rotten pork chop. We can cook it and maybe get a little bit of life left out of it. So in front of a roaring campfire, and at long last, we have a meal. But we've attracted the undead. Now literally waiting for grass to grow, Gerald Williams truly is the most unfortunate man in this world. And yet he soldiers on, guided by his principles. At two o'clock, it becomes clear that our situation is dire. We need to eat rotten foods. It might buy me another day here. Nothing. If this was to be my last night on Earth, I would have spent it in labor. If tomorrow is my last day on Earth, I might have one kilogram of fat left on my body. If we get even one scrap of food, this'll all be worth it. Nothing. Canned chili. Okay, that's better than nothing. It's time to get out of here and jump out the window. But all of this running for our lives has made us stronger and more fit. I have three more kilograms left on me. Well, you know, they say when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But if you don't get any lemons, you just might starve to death. A house, some signs of life, and it seems I've lost a group. This was a good find. I won't be in here forever, but a uh, cooking pot, anything in the freezer? No, I think there's no food in here either. Expert farming, worth it, but not by much. A jacket would be even better. No, just a flashlight. Well, this house turns out to be worthless. I can rest here though, in this couch, and I'm back off again, out the window. My original home, maybe there's something left, as well as the garage, and there is nothing in here. A sad but nostalgic reminder. And it looks as if the fire is still raging across the neighborhood. And shovel away the rest. That's the last of them in this neighborhood. Now, in a greater inferno, the fire spreads on. And there is no food anywhere at all. Peas! Rotten peas! I'll eat them. Every planet we reach is dead. We are each given on this earth a little life. It's up to us to decide what to do with the light that is ours. Some years ago I was reflecting on a short story by Franz Kafka called The Little Fable. It goes something like this. Alas, said the mouse, the whole world is growing smaller every day. At the beginning it was so big that I was afraid. I kept running and running. And I was glad when I saw walls far away to the right and left. But these long walls have narrowed so quickly that I'm now in the last chamber already. And there in the corner stands the trap that I must run into. You need only change your direction, said the cat, and ate it up. And so I think it is with us. Your skills, let them grow and flourish. But why do I sojourn here, alone and palely loitering? My cabbages are only halfway grown, but the birds still sing. Today in Project Zomboid, we starve to death. I'm running out of options. But what cruel woman led me here? Well, here's my story. Now, I will go into the river, and at the break of day, my will will rekindle just as I expected, or calculated, last summer, and I will have enough energy for the journey ahead. Like it or not, I have failed. A lifetime of renunciation lay before me now as my past Something I deeply regretted in my slothful embrace. I have wrecked so much damage upon myself. The way things are going, my rope is at its end. And I'm now coming to the final strands. The walls are now closing in on me. Soon, like a Montiato in his cask, I'll be sealed in here, never to escape. I will be in myself and of myself. Sealed and complete. I think it is with you. And yet, you'll endure. Though you'll never pass on despite the seductive waters of time, enveloping the living into the river of the past, and ensnaring us, dragging us down by the feet, that unquenchable tide of eons, subsuming all into one gray identity, a force of billions, trillions of consciousnesses, now reunited, congealing like oil in the waters. Maybe someday we will rekindle like the wind. I have a little life and a little light left. What time is still mine on this earth, I might as well rest and enjoy. Good morning, starshine. Now that I'm awake, I open the door and I step outside. Bless my eyes, Ahab and all his sailors. Now before me lay a bountiful harvest. Along with my can of chili, this may save my life. I need to eat a lot of cabbages right now. And 
so channeling my ancestors. I harvest over 19. Pay attention to the calories and the macronutrients in these. You need a certain number of carbs and you need carbs and fats to gain weight. Well, I wish I could wait for the seeds on these things. I just don't think I have enough time. I'll eat them all. I consume the food of Zeus. Fresh green food. It's still not enough though. I need more. And like a fat kid, I eat. And eat. And eat. I am large. And I contain multitudes. We have to get fat as hell. Fast. As long as I put all of these cabbages inside of me, it'll be safer to travel. And after eating 19 cabbages, I can't possibly fit any more. But I do now have one up chevron for my weight, so that means I'm gaining weight. Bless my eyes and ears. At least momentarily, we are saved. But there's no time to waste. We have to get the rest of these seeds back to the west. But if we have food, we can stay well fed along the journey and carry more items. So we have to move fast and decisively. That and I have a few more books to read which can lighten the load. Infinite knowledge can be held within the mind of the individual. Wisdom takes up no space. It is perfection. It's magnifique. Magnifique. And with that, we have two chevrons upward on our weight gain, so we stop eating cabbages. It's taken about 26 cabbages to get to this point. And with time comes great experience. Naturally, the next step on our journey is to collect all items that might be useful to us back in the West. It's more to carry, but we have enough food to stay strong. So I'm going to make my way back West once, and then again with more cabbage seeds. We drop off our supplies. This is more than enough to get started on a new life in the West. And blessed be my eyes. Our potatoes have grown as well and need watering. And we can wash our clothes. We return as always to the humble life of a farmer. We've now risen by 5 kilograms from eating 50 cabbages. That's all over the span of about 3 days. We bring a cabbage with us for the ride home. And a watering can with water. We are going places. 4 cabbage plants have borne seeds. It's time to harvest them. And with that we have more than enough cabbage plants and seeds to go on surviving. And I will survive. And now, covered in a mysterious fog, we make our final trip north. Right now, I am still... I am garbage. But not anymore, I'm now fatter garbage. It's worth saying that obese characters generally have a better time in combat, but can't run as far. Whereas underweight characters... Underweight characters can run, but they just... They can't fight. And as the days go on, the snow clears from the ground. It's time to clear the homestead. Now I'm no longer underweight, I'm not hungry, and I eat a lot. I am stronger now, and it should reflect in combat as we go. We've now weathered the winter. It's safer here. We're back up to a healthier weight. We're still sad, but that can change when I find more books. I think we'll leave it there for one day. That's been quite a lot. And we're actually starting to get ready to develop this character now. He has enough food, and he can survive for a long time. I don't say it enough, so God bless the AA support group. Thank you for helping me in every way, every day. I think we're gonna leave it there. Gerald Williams truly is improving now. Can he be stopped? I'll say this now, uh, a lot of you guys have been wondering about which version of the game I'm using. Currently I'm using the beta branch, something I probably didn't say a lot before, but now you know. As always, you've been wonderful, and I've been ambiguous amphibian, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye